Welcome back to another quick craft with the workshop. Today we're going to be making this really cool macrame wall hanging with wooden dowels. Let's go over all of our materials that you're going to need to make this. So you'll need a hot glue gun with a hot glue stick. It doesn't matter if it's high temp or low temp, use what you have at home. You'll also need some craft cord. This craft cord I grabbed at Hobby Lobby for another project, another macrame project, and had this left over. So we're going to be using this cord which has got about a medium thickness and you want something that you'll be able to unravel and I'll show you what I mean later in the tutorial. You'll also need a good pair of scissors and then you will need your three wooden dowels. These are 12 inches in length. I grabbed them in a pack of I think it was eight or 10 at Walmart, very affordable. I've also got some extra floral laying around that I grabbed at Dollar Tree last spring. However, I have seen it this spring. This is faux lavender. I'm going to add that and I also have some lamb's ear that I pulled off of a lamb's ear garland. I got it half off at Hobby Lobby and these are just pieces that I pulled off. So we'll use those later on in the tutorial as well. If you want to leave your wooden dowels raw, wood colored like I have in the example, you can. Or you can choose to paint your dowels. If you want your dowels painted, I would do that as step one and let them be drying. Before you start the process of the tutorial, you could use wood stain, which is what I was showing. Or you could just use regular water-based acrylic um, from any old craft store. So let's get started. You're going to take your three wood dowels and situate them in a triangle and leaving about an inch of dowel overlapping. We want that inch showing at each intersection so that we can easily secure them. And then you're going to hot glue them in all three of the intersections. next step we are going to prep our cord for attaching the three sections in our wood dowels Tri the triangle that you just hot glued together we will be using the cord to wrap around each intersection to add additional stability so you're going to measure out three feet of your cord and I just eyeballed it. I know about how long 12 inches is, and you'll see that I measured out three feet, and I'm just cutting off the end where they've taped the cord. I'm cutting that off because I want to be able to unravel this cord. This particular cord I'm using from Hobby Lobby is made up of three strands of individual yarn. So it's all braided or tied together, and what I'm doing is I'm twisting against the braid to unravel it. The goal is going to be at the end of this step, you wanna have three separate pieces of yarn from your original cord so that the, it's thinner in circumference and we can easily manage it as we tie it around the three intersections that make up our dowel triangle. Now that we have our cord unraveled, we want to make sure that we have three even pieces that are all three feet long of the cord. So these are going to be thinner pieces that came from your original single three foot cord. Now that your dowel is hot glued together into a triangle form and you've got your three pieces of cord, we're going to start securing them on each of the intersections on the triangle. So what I've done is I take my first piece of cord, I tie it in a double knot around the first intersection and make sure that's pretty secure and tight. And then I will start wrapping it around that intersection. 
and I'm careful to go in the same direction and wrap several times and then I'll change the direction in a minute and you'll see how you, I go through the center of the triangle here and I change the direction in which I'm wrapping it. This creates more stability on all sides of each intersection. So you wanna make sure that you do that on all three sides. When you're done wrapping all three points of your triangle with your yarn, you'll want to go ahead and double knot it and then trim off the excess yarn. At this point, you may want to add a little drop of hot glue on your knots just to add additional security. we're going to work on is cutting the cord and measuring it out to add the decorative portion of our wall piece um, and you'll be learning a couple of different macrame knots but first we need to cut our cord so what we're going to do is I'm eyeballing it but I'm going to measure out 10 feet and so I measure it out in 12 inch increments and make sure I've got my um, first cord cut in a 10 foot length and then I'm going to measure out and cut five more 10 foot length cords so I'll have a total of six working 10 foot long cords. Now that you have six 10 foot long cords cut, we're going to start attaching them to one side of your triangle. You're going to find the center of your first cord and create a loop. Then you're going to take that loop and hook it over your dowel and pull underneath. And then you're going to pull your two working cords through the loop and tighten up the loop. So that creates your first macrame knot. This is called a lark's head knot. You're gonna scooch that first cord up towards the knot where the two dowels intersect, and you want it to be about an inch from that knot, and then start with your second cord. You're gonna find the center of the second cord, create your loop, pull it over and under your dowel, and then pull your two free ends through that loop and pull it tight, creating your second lark's head knot. And then you're gonna scoot that knot up close to your first knot so that they're touching. 
you're going to repeat this step with each of your six chords. So what you'll be doing is adding each as a center loop and then pulling it over and under and through and scooching it up closer to the knots that you've added before it so that they are all touching and secure. You want to make sure that these knots are pulled tight so that they don't loosen up on you. Uh, an option would be to add a little drop of hot glue in the center of each of your lark's head knots to make sure that it is truly secure. Here's an example of what an actual lark's head knot looks like for you to reference. Now that you have all six of your cords attached to the dowel using the lark's head knot, you're gonna make sure that they're tight and that they're all pushed together on that same dowel and we're going to separate out cords two through six and get them out of the way and we're just gonna work on them a quarter at a time so it doesn't get overwhelming. So what I've done is I've pulled everything over to the side and I'm just gonna work with the working ends of my cord number one. I'm going to pull it over the dowel adjacent to it and under and through so it's on top of my dowel, goes underneath my dowel, and through the middle of the triangle to the bottom dowel, where it will go over that particular dowel. I'll pinch it in place so that I can hold it tightly. I'll bring it underneath the dowel and through the center of the triangle again, and I'm going to hold it in place and create a loop at the bottom, and then I'm gonna pull my two working cords through that loop to create a knot so that the cord is now secure. I know that's a lot, so I'm going to show it to you several different times so that we can get it and so that you'll be able to have the finished look. So as I'm making sure that that first knot is secure, I'm going to try to keep it out of the way as we go grab cord number two. So it's secure and then we're going to grab the two working cords that came out of the second lark's head knot. You're going to follow the same pattern that you created with the first cord. So you're going to go to the adjacent dowel and you're going to go over that dowel, underneath that dowel, and through the center of the triangle down to the bottom dowel. You're going to pull those working cords over the bottom dowel, creating a loop at the bottom. And then you're going to pull the two working cords as you're pinching the loop with your right hand, pull the two working cords through and over the dowel and through the loop, making a secure knot and then you'll push those two knots together. You'll repeat this exact same process with every single one of your Lark's head knots until you have all six cords attached to all three dowels in some way. Now that you have all six cords attached to all three dowels, goes over the one dowel underneath through the triangle and then knotted on the bottom dowel, you're going to end up with six knots on the bottom dowel. So at this point, if your knots are tight, which they should be, you can start playing with the placement of these bottom knots. You can separate them out to where you see a little bit of dowel in between each one of them, as I'm demonstrating here, or they can all be scooched together to where you really don't see any dowel in between each knot. For our tutorial purposes, I'm gonna leave it this way, but either way will work. Uh, it's just a personal preference. So now we're gonna start learning how to make a, our second macrame knot, which is a square knot. Let's start with our square knots now. You're going to work with your furthest two knots to the left with those first four cords. You're gonna take the far left cord, bring it over the two center cords, making a horizontal line. Then you're gonna take the far right cord and 
loop it over the horizontal line and pull it through and tighten it up. Then you repeat the exact same process starting from the right. Next, you're gonna start with your knots number three and four and repeat the exact same process. I find it easier to scooch the cords from the first two knots out of my way before I start making my next square knot. So again, you work with four cords at one time. You take your far left cord, you bring it across the two center cords making a horizontal line. You take your far right cord, bring it over the horizontal line underneath the two center cords and pull it through the hole and tighten it up. Then you repeat the exact same process starting from the right. You're going to go through this entire process until you get all six knots tied into three square knots. Now we're going to move on to the second row of square knots. You'll take the first two cords from the first knot and put them to the side. We want this to be a graduated square knot look, so we are going to keep the first two cords and the last two cords out, but we will be continuing with the exact same process of creating a square knot, first starting from the left and then finishing your knot from the right using four cords at a time. So you'll have two square knots in this row. On our third row, we are going to hold out our first four cords on the left and our last four cords on the right. So you're essentially only making one square knot in the center with those four cords. So this will give you a graduated look for your square knot coming down off of the bottom dowel. The first row has three the second row has two, and the last, which is the third row, will have one full square knot. Now, as I lay down the piece, you can see that there is a graduated V coming down off of the bottom dowel. You've got three on the top, two in the middle, one at the bottom. So now you can cut your cords as long as you want them. You can cut them straight across. You can cut them in um, an inverted V. You could do a reverse V. It's really truly up to you and the look that you're going for. Sometimes you might want to uh, put it up on the wall where it's gonna go and then measure out how long you want the uh, pieces that are hanging to be. I chose to make them about a foot and a half long um, that was just based off of where I thought I was going to put this piece in my home I decided to make a V with my long cords so the center two cords will be the longest at a foot and a half and then I gradually make them shorter as I work my way to the outer cords
Here's a square knot and detail so that you can see this for reference and practice on your own. Um, to finish out the macrame portion or the cord portion of this tutorial, you can do one of two things. You can tie a knot on the end and fray your yarn or your cord and kind of make a tassel. Or you could unravel every one of the cords to where it's individual pieces of yarn to make it look more full and fringy. So it's just truly up to you and the look that you want. I here am making the tassels and you'll see some photos at the end of the tutorial of uh, this piece if you were to have just unraveled each cord and made it look more full. Now that we've got our macrame dowel piece made, we're going to add some spring florals to it by just hot gluing them on. I would recommend cutting them down so that you don't have large pieces. This is kind of a dainty wall piece, so you don't necessarily want to put a bunch of heavy floral on there. This was really light and airy and fun, so I decided to clip off pieces of my faux lavender and lay them out and get it kind of sitting like I want it to just to see that I had enough and the placement looked like I wanted it to and then I went back with my hot glue gun to secure everything into place. Here's our finished macrame wall hanging piece. I think this is perfect to go into a bedroom or even a nursery. This actually matches my daughter's nursery with the lavenders and the grays. And I just think it adds such a fun, whimsical look to a room. And it's handmade by you. What could be better? Thank you for joining us for another quick craft with the workshop.